Now this week, we commemorate the day of Pentecost, hence the red stool, a day for acknowledging the presence and work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. To recap last week's sermon, we talked about how the Holy Spirit demonstrates the qualities of support and care that led theologians to see the Holy Spirit as maternal in character. We also considered the fact that Jesus' resurrected body existed in a specific time and space. And so Jesus ascended in order that he could send the Holy Spirit, the divine person of the Trinity, who could be present with all believers everywhere. For the church, that relationship began at Pentecost. After Jesus' ascension, the Holy Spirit began to intercede for all believers and through all believers. That is not to say that Jesus has ceased interceding for us. The letter to the Hebrews assures us that even now, Christ continues this intercessory work after his ascension, stating, For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Yet, the Holy Spirit's role parallels that of Christ. The letter to the Romans tells us that the Holy Spirit regenerates us, giving life to those who are spiritually dead in their sins and trespasses. Day in and day out, the Holy Spirit progressively transforms believers into the image of Christ. From now until your last day on earth, the Holy Spirit not only works to mold you more and more into the image of Christ, but also ensures your eternal security and future glorification. How? Well, Romans 8 tells us. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words. Romans tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with unspoken groanings, reflecting God's deep desire for our glorification and aiding us in our weakness. Why? Because we do not know how to pray as we ought. Now, there are some churches that would teach that the Holy Spirit's groaning is some sort of external phenomenon, a nonsensical, ecstatic blather, while neglecting the true internal work of the Holy Spirit. The groanings of the Holy Spirit are not audible sounds, but profound, ineffable expressions of the Holy Spirit's spiritual support on behalf of believers that parallel your own prayers, ensuring that your prayers align with God's will. The Holy Spirit living within you prays as you pray perfecting your prayers. In the next verse, Romans 8, verse 27, we read, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Who is he who searches our hearts? Well, in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel tells us, The Lord does not look at the things people look at, People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. It is God, the Father, who looks on the heart, knows our inmost being, and yet also hears the intentions and intercessions of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's prayers are in perfect harmony with God's will. And this means that even when we do not have the words to express our needs, the Holy Spirit intercedes for God's people with groanings too deep for words. The Holy Spirit's intercession provides profound assurance to believers. The Spirit, who knows the mind of God, ensures that your prayers line up with God's perfect will, even when you are unsure how to pray or what to say. Many of us suffer from the imposter complex when it comes to prayer, or we feel incompetent. We say to ourselves, I'm not good enough to stand before God, and I wouldn't know what to say. Well, of course, I mean, none of us in ourselves is good enough to stand before God, and none of us has the foggiest idea what to say to our omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent God, who already knows everything. But that's okay, 
because the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to say and prays along with you in some audible groanings that do line up with the will of God and intercede on your behalf. Don't feel that you know what to say. Well, pray anyway. God is deeply involved in your life through the Holy Spirit's work. The Holy Spirit supports and guides you toward your ultimate glorification. The Holy Spirit supports God's unwavering commitment to your spiritual journey and your final redemption. You persevere, not because of your own merit, but because God, the Holy Spirit, was sent by God, the Christ, so that you might appear sinless before God, the Father. In fact, the Holy Spirit is God's bulwark how God protects you from the devil, the accuser. The devil is not on your side. The contrast between the intercession of God and the accusation of the devil is profound. It is no small thing to say that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are described in the Bible as our advocates. After all, it is the devil's function to accuse us of our sinfulness, but we have God itself Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit representing us before God, defending us against those accusations, bringing us closer to God's love and grace, restoring and maintaining our relationship with God. In sending us the Holy Spirit, Jesus ensures that we are never alone in our struggle with sin. What could be better than to have divine advocates who intercede on our behalf guiding us, supporting us, and securing our ultimate glorification. Revelations 12, 10 states, For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. The devil seeks to condemn, deceive, and separate us from the love and grace of God. While God's intercession aims to restore and forgive, the devil's accusations aim to separate us from God, fostering shame and hopelessness. Each person must choose. To whom will you listen? Will you listen to the voice of accusation crushing your spirit? Or will you listen to the Holy Spirit who, in and through Christ, declares your righteousness before God the Father in heaven? The Holy Spirit, living in you then, must be your guide to interpreting your life's experiences. Every moment of every day, you are offered a choice. You can choose to act as the Holy Spirit would act, interceding for others, drawing out the best in them, and loving them as a parent would. Or you can accuse seeing the worst, as the devil does. One way to illustrate this is through our texts and the emails that we receive. Written words lack tone of voice, which is essential for communication. Readers are forced to interpret the tone in every message we send and receive. That is why emojis have become so important. In every email we read, we decide whether to assume the best in the tone, as the Holy Spirit would do, or to assume the worst, as the devil would. It is up to the reader to choose how they will perceive the tone of the message. This simple, everyday occurrence serves as a clear-cut illustration. We assume the best of some and less of others. Well, how much more Christ-like would it be if we always invested some compassion in how we read the messages we receive from others? And just as the Holy Spirit intercedes for us individually, the Spirit also intercedes through us as a community. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon a gathered community, empowering them to speak in languages they did not know, all the while proclaiming the gospel. This event literally signifies the birth of the Christian church, a community of believers united by the Spirit. And just as the early Christians experienced the Holy Spirit's presence together, we too are called together to support and uplift each other in prayer. Acts 2, verses 1 to 4, tells us, 
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This direct experience of the Holy Spirit was a communal experience, the ultimate example of a congregation praying together. Our prayer groups, communal prayer times during worship services and special moments of intercessory prayer are not just routine activities, they are vital expressions of our faith and our unity. When we pray together and intercede for each other, we strengthen the bonds of our community, fostering a sense of unity and mutual support, reminding us that we are not alone in our spiritual journeys. Our prayers for our community are a powerful witness to our community. Prayer is one of the ways we demonstrate the love of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit in a tangible way. And the Holy Spirit's presence among us transforms our prayers, making them a powerful force for good in our lives and in the broader community. And this is one of the reasons why Sunday mornings gathering and worship remains so important. Our prayers have the power to bring comfort and healing and hope to those in need, reflecting the grace and compassion of Christ. So let us continue to embrace and cherish our times of community intercession. By coming together in prayer, we not only support each other, but also participate in the divine intercession of the Holy Spirit. Together, we become a beacon of God's love and grace shining brightly in our community and beyond. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you into our hearts and our community. Help us to support one another in prayer. Intercede for us with groanings too deep for words. We thank you for aligning our prayers with the will of God. Make our prayers a witness to the love and grace Jesus brought into this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.